Greetings to Dr. Zaki Naik and all my brothers and sisters here in the name of our Lord Creator. Well, it's an honor to meet you, sir, Dr. Zaki Naik. Well, my name is Mahesh and I work as a customer service officer in Dubai and I'm a born again Christian. My question, sir, today is how confident is Islam that it is not deceived by Satan or the Jal that Jesus was crucified for all our sins. Brother Mahesh has asked a question that how confident is Islam that it's not deceived by Satan and Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was not crucified. Brother, Islam means peace acquired by submitting your will to God. And anyone who submits his will to God, he is a Muslim. As far as our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned, he has ilm gab, he has knowledge of the future. Allah says in the Quran very clearly in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 157. Allah says that they boasted, the Jews, that we killed Jesus, the son of Mary. Allah says, Wama kataluhu, wama salubuhu. They killed him not needed to crucify him. Walakin should be alone. And anyone who differs is full of doubts. Illatibazan, which only conjectures to follow. Wama kataluhu yakina. For assuredly they killed him not. So Quran is very explicit, confident, without a single doubt, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was not killed. Neither was he crucified. It was only made to appear so. All those who differ are full of doubt. As far as I being a Muslim is concerned, I am 100% confident because Quran says that. But to make you also confident, I can prove it to you from your Bible. That Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, wasn't crucified so that you will come to know it is not the Muslims who are deceived, it is the so called Christians. Who believe that Jesus was crucified, peace be upon him, are deceived. If you read the Bible, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38, that people come to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, ask him, O oh Lord, O oh Master, show us wonders and miracles and signs. People came and asked Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, show us signs, show us miracle to prove that a messenger of God. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he says, you evil and adulterous generation, you seek it after a sign, no sign shall be given to you except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, puts all his eggs in one basket. He does not say that I will show you the miracle you know that I gave life to the dead, I healed those who are born lepers. He puts all his eggs in one basket and says, I shall give you no sign but the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, to know the sign of Jonah, you have to go to the Bible and there's a book by the name of Book of Jonah. It is less than two sides in the Bible. And if you have read the Bible, you know that Almighty God commands his prophet Jonah that to go to Nineveh. Now, Jonah being a prophet of God, he says that people of Nineveh, I will understand, he takes a ship to Joppa. Now, while he's going, there's a storm at sea. And there was a superstition at that time that anyone who doesn't obey the commandment of his master, because of that a storm will come. So Jonah being a prophet of God, he owns up and volunteers that I am the person who has disobeyed my master. So because he owns up, at that time it was a custom, it was a superstition that if you throw the person overboard who is disobeying his master, then the storm will come. Jonah being a prophet of God, he volunteers, so they don't have to tie his legs, they don't have to tie his feet. 
they throw him overboard in the storm. I'm asking a question, brother. When Jonah was thrown overboard from the ship into the sea, was Jonah dead or alive? Brother, I'm asking you the question. Was Jonah dead or alive when he was thrown overboard in the sea? Yeah, I, I got your question, but... I'm, I, you got my question, you haven't given my answer. According to you in the Bible, when Jonah was thrown overboard, was he dead or alive? Well, it is out of my question, so if you can... I'm the giving point. the answer to your question. I'm answering your question. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, he puts all his eggs in one basket. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. I'm answering a question. Why aren't you answering my question? Was Jonah dead or alive? Well, I'm pretty much not sure with that. And so you haven't read the Bible? I've been reading. I've... I have not come across a single Christian who does not know the book of Jonah. He may not know the other parts of the Bible because this you even learn in Sunday school. Even a small child knows the story of Jonah. How come you don't know? Sir, I appreciate your effort that you're answering, but this I'm, is ask taking... I'm yes. asking the question. If you have read the Bible, if you know your Bible, was yes. Jonah dead or if you don't know your Bible, then what is the use of me talking from your Bible? A simple question like two plus two is equal to how much? And you cannot reply. That means you're afraid of the truth. No, sir. Was Jonah dead or alive? Dead or alive? Either say dead or either say alive. What are we? No, I cannot guess, but if you're sure with the Bible, please go ahead. Okay, so you don't know? Yeah, please. You go don't ahead. know, you don't want to answer. I don't want to answer, but want you to answer, please. Ah, correct. Why? Why you don't? Are you afraid? Two plus two is equal to how much, brother? Four exactly. Four exactly, you can say. Jonah was dead or alive, you don't know. When he was thrown overboard, was he dead or alive? You know the answer, but don't want to answer. Why? Are you afraid of the truth? I feel the devil is deceiving you now. Huh? No, the devil cannot deceive. Oh, devil cannot deceive you. Why? Because I believe in Christ, the Lord Jesus. You do not know the sign of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. You do not know the Bible. How do you believe in Jesus Christ? I love Jesus Christ more than you. Do you know that? I follow his commandment more than you. You only theoretically are saying, I know the commandment of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him in the Bible, you don't know. So who's a better believer in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him? You or me? A person who follows the commandment of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him is a better believer or a person who does not? I think we are going apart from the question. I'm not again. going apart. The devil is deceiving you. I want to take the devil away from you. The devil is saying, don't answer. If you answer, you'll get caught. If you answer, then you'll get close to the truth. No, sir. My question was to look at a view from Islam, if how confident they were. About Hundred Jesus percent confident. How confident are you? You are not confident that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was crucified. That's the reason even after knowing the answer, you're not answering. It is devilish. If you ask me a question, if I know the answer and I'm not answering, that means I'm afraid of the truth. Why are you afraid of the truth when Jesus Christ is with you? When Jesus Christ is with you, why are you afraid of the truth? I'm I know you know the answer. I know you know the answer. And I know that if you answer, you will get exposed. That Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was not crucified. Let, me be, let me be honest. I really don't know the answer. But would look forward to have your explanations. Do sir. you know about the sign of Jonah? Have you heard about the story of Jonah? Yes, I did. Do you know that he was thrown overboard? Yes, but when he was thrown, was he dead or alive? I can guess maybe he was dead. When he was thrown? Yeah. Where did you read this? In which Bible? As I told I you. I challenge you, you show me any verse in the Bible which says that Jonah was dead when he was thrown alive. I'll accept Christianity. <laughs> Your devil is not even allowing you to answer the truth. I challenge you, open the book of Jonah. It says that Jonah was alive. So why are you giving the wrong answer? Doesn't your Bible say that Jonah prayed in the belly of the fish? Was he dead when he prayed or was he alive when he was praying? He must be alive. So why are you saying dead? I was not sure with the book of Jonah, sir. I have not met a single Christian 
who doesn't know this answer? You know the answer, but purposely you are deviating because you don't love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. I'll go ahead with the story. When Jonah was thrown overboard, he had to be alive. Then there's a storm. In the storm, when a human being is thrown, he ought to die. He does not die because that's a miracle. If he dies, it's no miracle. If he does not die, it's a miracle. A fish comes and gobbles him up. A fish comes and follows him up. A person ought to die, but Jonah is alive. Peace be upon him. If he dies, it's not a miracle. He's alive, it's a miracle. Three days and three nights, the fish takes Prophet Jonah around the sea. A person ought to die. Does he die or not? As you told, he's alive. No, because if he has to pray, he has to be alive to pray. Yes. Dead men don't pray. He was alive. So it's a miracle of a miracle of a miracle. Later on, the fish vomits him out onto the shore. When the fish vomits, Prophet Jonah, was he dead or alive? Alive. Alive. Alive, 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 alive. A miracle of a miracle of a miracle of a miracle. Now Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. I'm asking the question, when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, when he was taken down from the cross, and when he was put in the sepulchre, in the grave, was Jesus Christ dead or alive? He was dead. That means Jesus Christ told a lie. He said, as Jonah was three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights. So if Jonah was alive and Jesus was dead, that means Jesus Christ lied. So do you believe Jesus Christ lied? No, sir, definitely not. So why are you going against the person who you love? I will never believe that a messenger of God can lie. That means he was dead or alive. It says Jonah was three days in the belly of the fish. Three days goes. and three nights. Don't cut. Okay, three days and three and nights yes, in the belly quote, of the yes. fish. So shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Yes. In so, when the Jonah, heart of the earth. so when Jonah was alive, what was Jesus Christ peace be upon him? So, but the main purpose is he being in the heart of the earth, which is fulfilled. The prophecy says, as Jonah was. How was Jonah dead or alive? He was alive, as we told. So Jesus Christ also has to be alive. Plain, simple reading. Why are you following the devil's footstep? Simple, if Jonah was alive, Jesus Christ has to be alive, peace be upon him. If you say he was dead, that means you are saying Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, lied. That means he's not a man of God. So the prophecy says that so as Jonah, he shall be three days in the belly of the earth. Three days and three nights. Why are you cutting, brother? Okay. You don't know English? Okay, I'm not cutting. Let it take it as three days and three nights. Yes, very good. But uh, Dr. Zaki and I... Okay, okay wait, wait. Do you know the Bible? When was Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, put on the cross? Which day was it? It was on Friday. Friday when? When was he taken down? At night. At night, Friday night, correct? So he was put in the sepulchre when? Maybe at night. Friday night, correct. Mm -hmm. When was the tomb empty? When did Mary Magdalene found the tomb empty? Sunday. What time? Morning, afternoon, evening? Well, at night, I guess. Morning. Sunday morning? Yes. Okay. So if you count, Friday night, he was in the tomb. One night. Saturday morning, full day he was in the tomb. One night, one day. Saturday night, he was there. Two nights and one day. Does two nights and one day equal to three days and three nights? Technically, no, sir. So technically, why are you telling Jesus Christ is a liar? Peace be upon him. Now Billah. So technically, you are calling Jesus Christ a liar. No, sir, but I... No, sir, no, sir, no, sir, 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 here. Why are you accusing my beloved prophet Jesus Christ? Peace be upon him. I wouldn't like anyone accusing my prophet to be a liar. Once, twice. Why? Because I don't see a valid reason why they have to make it false 
of Jesus crucifixion. You are making false, not I. Quran is very clear. He was not crucified, neither was he killed. Even in the Bible, he was put on the cross, but he did not die on the cross. Crucifixion means the person should die on the cross. C R U C I F I X I O N. But a new word has to be coined. He was put on the cross, but did not die. It's called as crucifixion. C R U C I F I C T I O N. It's the fiction. So if he dies, it's called as crucifixion. If he does not die, it's a fiction. It's a story. So if you read the Bible, in the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did not die on the cross. If he dies, that means he's lying. So if you say he died, that means he's a liar. I would prefer calling my prophet as a truthful person rather than a liar. So what you're talking is the teachings of the church, of your priest. You are more bothered about following your priest than following the messenger of Allah. For you, the teachings of the church is more important than the teachings of the Bible. So to fulfill the teachings of your church, you are calling Prophet Jesus a liar. I would not like to call my Prophet a liar, brother. Do you understand English? Yes, so do I. So you have to agree that Jesus was alive. And Jesus wasn't crucified, everything is matching. What you are talking is the teaching of the church, not the Bible. So but as but, you but, think for a redemption of sin, why would one want to lie? about the crucifixion of Jesus. But where did Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, say that he will redeem people's sin? Quote me any one verse in the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that he is God to worship me. Nowhere does it say. In fact, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 7 to 20, that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scars and the Pharisees, you shall never enter the kingdom of heaven. So if you want to go to heaven, you have to follow all the rules and laws and commandments of the Old Testament. Yes. So Old Testament says God is one. It doesn't say three in one. It says God has got no image. God has got no idol. Yet, many of the Catholics, they do idol worship. They make an image of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. It clearly says that when a person came to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 19, verse number 16, 17, that a man approaches Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, asks him, that good master, what good things should I do so that I enter eternal life? So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, replies, why thou callest me good? There's only one good, and that is Almighty God. If you want to enter eternal life, you keep the commandments. He never said you believe that I'm God. He never said you believed I died on the cross for your sins. That is the teachings of Paul, not of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Paul says in Corinthians and all that believe in Jesus. Where did Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, say? He said that if you want to go to heaven, you keep the commandments. So are you going to follow Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, or somebody else? Jesus Christ. And so where said, did Jesus say that you have to believe that I died for your sin? Show me one quotation where he himself said it. So in Matthew, I'm not sure with the verses, but he says about the loss, he has come to fulfill the loss. If someone comes to fulfill the loss, does it mean that he died for his sins? If I have come to fulfill your loss, if you don't understand, I'm trying to fulfill your loss. That doesn't mean I become God. That doesn't mean that I've come to die for your sin. Yes, he came to guide the people. And even I believe in that. Where does it say that he died for your sins? So, like John 3.16 says that for God so loved the world, he gave him one and only son, Lord Jesus. What you're quoting is Gospel of John chapter 3 verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not die but have everlasting life. Do you know this word begotten yes, is sir. a pollution? It's a fabrication. It's a concoction. According to the Revised Standard Edition of the Bible, the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, revised by 32 Christian scholars of the highest eminence, it says this word begotten is an interpolation, it's a fabrication, it's a concoction, and they're thrown out of the Bible. So this word begotten is a fabrication. And again, for God's soul of the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth in him shall have everlasting life. You have to believe in him. Not believing Paul. 
So where is the problem? Where am I saying don't believe in him? Even I'm believing in him. I follow him. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was circumcised. Brother, are you circumcised? No. I'm circumcised. Who's following Jesus? You or me? Who's following Jesus? Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said we have to follow the Old Testament. It's mentioned in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse number 18, don't have alcohol. It's mentioned in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, verse number 1, don't be drunk with alcohol. Brother, do you have alcohol? No, sir. You have alcohol? No. Mashallah, this part you're following. Brother, do you have pork? Yes, I do. It's mentioned in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, verse number 7 and 8, not to have pork. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8, not to have pork. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 65, verse number 2 to 5, don't have pork. You have pork, I don't have pork. Who's following Jesus more, you or me? So, but in New Testament... But I'm asking the question, you are following Jesus more or me? So you forgot to quote another verse in New Testament. I'm not sure with the verse numbers, but it says, what you have with your mouth doesn't defile your body. And it was from Jesus. But where does it say that you should have pork? Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 7 to 20, it says, if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, you have to follow all the laws and commandments of the Old Testament. Same thing. What you have doesn't defile, that does not overrule that you should not follow the laws and commandments of the Old Testament. Where does it say? Jesus Christ, peace be cannot contradict. If you break one jot or tittle, Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse number 7 to 20. I've come not to destroy. I've come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Anyone who breaks one of the least commandments, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever shall keep the commandments and teach men to do so will be called get in the kingdom of heaven. Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven. So here Jesus is telling, even if you break one jot or tittle from the Old Testament, you shall not enter Jannah. You shall not enter paradise. So where did Jesus Christ say that you have to have pork? Well, sir, as I told you, he again mentions that it doesn't defile your body. What goes Does it talk mind. about pork? No, sir. But it's clearly mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse number 7 to 20. If you don't understand English, it's whose problem? Your problem or my problem? In the Bible, book of Leviticus chapter 11 verse 7 to 8, book of Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse number 8, in the book of Isaiah chapter 65 verse number 2 to 5, says you should not have pork. So if I don't have pork, am I following Jesus Christ better than you or not? Sir, so I also follow New Testament. Even I follow New Testament, nowhere does the New Testament say, nowhere does Jesus Christ peace be upon say in the New Testament to have pork. Where does it say? Give me the reference. He, in specific, doesn't tell to have pork. I want to follow specific. When specific Old Testament says you should not have, never will Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, contradict anything from the Old Testament. If he contradict, that means he's lying in Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse number 17. Because he says, I've come not to destroy the law of the prophets. I've come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Fulfill means follow everything of the Old Testament. So why do you want to make Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, a liar? No, sir. I definitely not tell him. So please liar. go back home, read, stop having pork, stop having alcohol, believe in one God, don't do idol worship, believe in the messenger of God and not God. And that will take the devil out of you, inshallah. Hope that answers the question. God bless you, sir.